In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get paid to learn blockchain development. All right. And that might sound kind of crazy because normally, like, wouldn't you pay someone else to teach you this kind of thing? But in this video, I'm going to show you how to reverse the order of those two things. I'll share this little known strategy for becoming a pro level blockchain developer. So I've done this myself and you can do it too if you want to break into blockchain so that you can, you know, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, you know, build your own project. I'm going to show you how in this video. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. Don't forget, the Trading Bot Masterclass is this week. So if you haven't signed up already, click the link down below if you want to learn how to build your own profitable cryptocurrency trading bot. So how can you get paid to learn to code? Well, let me tell you about how I did this personally, okay? I'll tell you the story about you know how I did it, and then I'll break it down step by step so that you can see how to do the same thing. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you might know some about my background already, but if you haven't, then let me just kind of refresh you a little bit. See, I'm a self-taught programmer. I didn't go to school for computer science. I didn't go to a coding boot camp. In fact, I got rejected from coding boot camp. All right. So, you know, my initial uh, journey into software development was a bumpy one. I'll put it that way. Now, I was a developer already before I got into blockchain, but let's back up even further. Like when I first learned to code, because, you know, I taught myself programming from scratch. I didn't know any programmers when I started. So I remember what it feels like to be just like searching on the internet, thinking like, hey, can I actually like teach myself? You know, can I make a career out of this? What's the best path forward? But back then, like I knew that I needed two things. I needed the skills because of course, like nobody's going to hire me if I couldn't code. And then also people needed to know that I was a developer because, you know, who's going to hire me if nobody knew about me. And so I first started focusing on those two things. You know, I started devouring as many online learning resources as I could, you know, all of the tutorials I could find. And that was really even before, you know, people were doing programming tutorials on YouTube. So, I mean... I wish I'd had this resource when I first started. And I also jumped into as many paid courses as I could find. And so after just like binge learning with all these resources, I started to go to local coding meetups, okay? And one of the reasons I wanted to do that was sort of gauge my progress and see how far I'd come because there were other people who went to coding boot camps who went to these meetups as well. And I was just over here, you know, the coding boot camp reject. <laughs> so I wanted to see if I was actually like, you know, on pace with these other students. And so when I got there, I actually found something really interesting. So in a lot of ways, I was actually ahead of some of the other students who were in the boot camp, but also maybe a little bit behind in some areas. And I'll talk more about that here in a minute. But I was actually ahead like in practical skills because I spent all my time like actually trying to implement things rather than just like learn about software development inside of a boot camp. And so that surprised me a little bit, right? And so when I was going to these meetups though, I was still trying to think like, hey, how far should I get before I start working as a developer? Like how good do I need to be, all right? And so like when I was trying to figure this out, I actually met my first mentor at this meetup and he actually encouraged me to jump in now. And I was thinking like, no, that can't be right. Like I've just been doing tutorials. Like I've just been building my own projects. I don't have any professional experience. Um, you know, these guys over here are going to these boot camps. That's not me. And so I was full of self doubt. So I know what that feels like. But he ended up actually hiring me for my first developer job as a freelancer. And I was in complete disbelief because there was still so much that I didn't know. I mean, I'm talking, I had like major gaps in my understanding. You should watch the video I did about how I thought I almost got fired from my first freelancing job because I made such terrible mistakes. But he was still aware of like the gaps in my understanding, but he was paying me to work for him. And that's basically how I got paid to learn to code. And so I was a junior developer and in my eyes, I wasn't ready to start working, but there were actually people who were willing to hire me. And that's the whole point I want to try to make in this video is that you can get yourself to a certain point where other people will actually be willing to hire you for the right job. And so I'm not the only person to have done this, okay? It's not just me. I'm not just special. You should watch the video I did with Ben on my channel a while back on how he got his first blockchain job with zero coding experience. He employed a very similar strategy and got hired that way and also got paid to learn. All right, so let me break this down about how this process actually works so that you can try the same thing. And I'll give you some tips on how to implement it. Well, first of all, it works because you're providing value to someone else, okay? So in my case, I was working directly under somebody else and was able to increase their efficiencies. They were like getting a return on their investment by hiring me. And they were essentially training me to do the exact job that I needed to do. And they saw 
that I, you know, I had the ability to be autonomous and also, you know, like figure things out where I needed to. And that's a lot of how this worked. So basically, like you want to find a place where people can spend a little bit of time with you to teach you what you need to know. But then the rest of the time you can spend, you know, learning on your own in the job and also accomplishing things. You know, you have to provide value and then they give you the value in return of, you know, compensation and also that experience. All right. So now let me give you some tips on how to actually do this. Okay. Because, you know, a lot of people are going to get this wrong. You know, I got this wrong, as you can see in this story, because so many people think like they get to this point and they're not really sure whether they should start trying to look for work or not. They think, oh, I'm not good enough. And so you're never going to answer this question for yourself just alone inside your head. Like the market has to decide for you. So that being said, at some point you just have to jump. And so I recommend like getting your name out there and applying to jobs before you think you're actually ready. This can be really scary and painful, but it's actually really valuable for a few reasons, all right? First, you know, the market will tell you whether you're ready or not, like I was saying, so you'll, you know, get that validation or that rejection. But if you are rejected, like you can see it as a good thing because then they can tell you exactly what you need to work on in order for your skill to be viable in the workplace. Because what you don't want to do is spend hours and hours and hours, days, months, years, like learning in the wrong direction when the market says, hey, maybe you should actually focus on this because this is what we need. You know, you just don't want to spend time learning the wrong things. So you definitely need to apply before you think you're ready. But so if you were to ask me, like, you know, what's some basic advice when you think you should do this? Because obviously, like, you shouldn't go out and just put out job applications if you've never done a single tutorial before, right? So at what point would I consider you ready to take step number one? So I would say you need to do a few basic things. First, you of course need to do some guided tutorials where you're just getting in there, learning the technology and building a project. It's the primary way that I teach on this channel. And so you definitely want to do those tutorials. And then after that, I highly recommend doing a much bigger professional project, a lot like the one that I show you how to build inside the blockchain bootcamp. One that's more professional grade than just a tutorial, okay? And then after that, the next goal is to build some project on your own where you're like trying to figure out the problem you need to solve and you build something unguided where you don't have a tutorial to bail you out. You need to build something without knowing what the final solution is going to be. All right. So that's, that's the next step. And then once you have that, you need to use that project for your portfolio. And this portfolio is basically your key to marketing yourself as a blockchain developer so you can show an employer what you can do, present yourself, and also use that project that you built as your main portfolio piece so they can see what you're capable of. And once you have all these things, that's when I would say start applying for jobs. And you know, you might face some rejection early on like what I was talking about, but that will show you like what you need to work on so that you can actually start landing that job. And so the next major tip for doing this strategy is to specialize, 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 Okay. And this is really important because like when you're doing this strategy and you're trying to get paid to learn, you at least need to be good enough in one area where someone's willing to pay you, okay? And then you can learn everything else you need to know around that. That's a lot like what I did when I first got started. So for me, like I got really good at backend web development and I barely even knew front-end development when I started that. So I had a very focus that someone was willing to hire me for. And then I literally learned like everything else around that on the job. And so in blockchain, like maybe you say, I want to get really good at solidity and then learn other all the other skills around that, like, you know, backend development, front-end development, et cetera, et cetera, while I'm working. Because there are plenty of jobs where like any blockchain knowledge is really scarce. And so if you have some blockchain, you can still provide a value to the company. You should check out the video I did with Jesse from Future Swap on how he did the exact same thing. And he was working in an environment where he barely knew anything, but he had some blockchain knowledge and that was still valuable for his company. And that's the next tip. You need to find the right job to do this. This won't be the right strategy for every single job, but that's okay. There's a lot of jobs out there. You just have to find the ones that are willing to hire you under these circumstances. So ideally, you'll want to work in a role where there is someone who's higher up than you, who's able to delegate tasks to you. This is not the right strategy for you to become like the architect of the entire system necessarily. And so you want to find a job like where you're working with somebody who knows more than you because, you know, at the end of the day, you want to learn from them and acquire those skills. That's how you get paid to learn. And the next tip is that like getting your foot in the door is really worth something. So if you want to employ this strategy and get paid to learn, you're probably going to have to work for a reduced rate at least initially, okay? So unless someone has said, hey, we want to hire you and get basically get paid to learn, et cetera, et cetera, let's say that you're pitching this strategy to someone else. Let's say it's a junior developer job and you really need to persuade someone that you're the right person for the job. Well, you might be able to increase your odds of getting hired if you're willing to work for a little bit less. Now, I know that's not always the best feeling when you're getting started, but 
the experience is definitely worth something to you. And what would you rather do? You know, sit around for months learning and not getting paid or would you rather get paid and work at the same time? And so a few more quick tips like, a lot of people ask me, hey, can I do this as a freelancer? Well, yes, you can. I mean, that's what I did when I first started. But if you're going to do that, you ideally want to work with another freelancer uh, who is a little bit more senior than you so that you can actually get that knowledge from them. And so if you want to do that, you know, you could always go to a website like Upwork.com and find other people who are freelancing on that platform and then offer to work for them. And so the last thing I'll say about this is that eventually everybody ends up doing this if they become a professional developer. You know, I've said this a lot, like, whether you're a self-taught developer or not, everyone ends up on the same path of self-learning in their career because the software industry is always changing. And so learning to learn on the job is like an essential skill over the long term. And if you build that initially on your first job where you're getting paid to learn, you'll advance so much faster in your career because eventually everybody ends up getting paid to learn. That's how you can get paid to learn blockchain development. You know, I've done this and that's my outline of how you can employ this strategy too. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. You know, and if you want to learn these tutorials, you know, get these skills up so that you can go apply for that first job, you know, get that feedback or, hey, maybe you might get hired the first time, then uh, you can definitely check out my free courses, right? Just go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or, hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely and just like learn how to build a real world blockchain project step by step that you can use for your portfolio to try to land your job, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.